Why? If you talk about, you have some fascination for trains. Can you say that? Like, you have something or the other thing that is linked with the trains in your films. Is that so? Why is that so happening? Or it's just a coincidence? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't consciously say why I'm, what is fascinating. It's just that I think I'm fascinated with a lot of elements that are cinematic, which convey more than just, you know, just what they are, not just objects, but they convey something much more than that. And any other element, you know, you use everything. As a, as a filmmaker, you try to use a lot of elements, a lot of, you know, whether it is, whether it is wind, whether it is rain, whether it is, you know, the landscape. You try to use everything. You try to use colors, you try to use music, you try to use all those elements to help you tell a story. You know. So, trains is just one of those, that's all. If you talk about your films, you have made a very, there's a, your uh, repertoire is very small, the films that you have. You have a very less number of films. Why you just do one f uh, film in a year? The directors are making more and more films. Are they? <laughs> I like to see them. No, I think one film in a year is a little tough for me. Actually, I'd like to do half films and leave it, you know. The second half is a difficult one to finish. But, uh, no, I don't think so. I think I've been working at a rapid pace, really. I think one film a year is, if you have to write and direct a film, it takes you that time. I mean, a film just consumes you, you know, and there is, you know, there's a scripting, there's a pre-production, you have to produce, you have to post-produce, and then you have to market it. There's enough, I mean, it just occupies you enough. If I did more than that, then I'd... <laughs> I just want to have a question, like, why are the subjects you choose? What's, what do you think that goes into you? What inspires you to choose the subjects that you had been choosing. Is there anything that struck you? What struck you while you choose Bombay, Dilse and Rosa? No, if you... Let me answer the first part of your question, which is a generalized thing. You know, see, when you make a film... Yeah? See, when you make a film, you're doing it for a whole year. You're living with that film for the entire year or little more than that. So, unless you're convinced that that's something that you can live with for the entire year, it is, it's very difficult to do a film. Because you're not just going there and shooting and coming back home, you know, it's, you're carrying it with you wherever you go, you're sleeping with it, getting up with it, it's, a, it's like being married, you know. So, if, if you're going to do a film, you better be very sure about it, that, you, that this passion will last at least through the year, you know. So, unless you're that sure, you don't get into a film. So. There are things that are in your mind and when you, when you, you know, you're very sure that you want to do this now, that you go ahead and do this. The second part you're asking me about Bombay or Roja or something like that, it is... No, I cannot say that today I thought that, uh, no, I'll do this film. It's not that. It's something that happens and, you know, you're reacting to somebody and you're telling someday we should do something about this, you know. It's, you know, that, that's how it came about, you know, I was telling a music director that someday we should do something about it, about Bombay and, and we're in the middle of some other film but when I finished, when I finished that film, Tridad Tridad, we got on to this, you know, because it's, it just comes to you that, you know, it bothers you, you think that it can be done, you can, it is, there are a lot of people who feel the same way you feel about, about what's happening in our country, who are not saying it because they don't have a platform to say it and you want to say it and if you have a platform and you think you can say it correctly, Go ahead. Rosa won that Rajiv Gandhi National Integration Award. How it felt when you got that award? How, how was... Do you really feel that you have delivered your message? I mean, you're... I mean, what is delivering a message? And you, you have expressed yourself, yes. How much it reaches, how much people carry, how it has affected them. I wouldn't know, really. You know, I mean, you never know. It, it is... Some some films last only till you reach the bus stop. You leave the theater and reach the bus stop, and the film is gone out of your mind. So you don't know. But what I wanted to do with Roja was to express an emotion, express a, a feeling of what is of a reaction. And we took a particular point of view and expressed it from that point of view. And that's what we did. I was happy that we did it. You know? And the fact that it reached across, it was meant as a Tamil film for a small market. But it crossed over and reached a national audience was uh, was satisfying that you can say something at one corner of India and another corner gets to hear it was was a satisfying thing. When you spend so much time on a film, you work so hard and you know you're doing your best. And when the things like this turn into controversy, 
I think it's uh, how do you feel about that? It must no, be very if, saddening. If you're if you're clear, if your conscience is clear, you did it with a clean intention. With this, is what you wanted to do, and you have done it. You stand by it. I mean, it doesn't bother you at all. I've never thought. I mean, whatever controversy any of the films, I'm, it's never bothered me because I I firmly believe in what I say, in what I believe in. So I I don't think that's an issue at all to me. Like no, normally directors say there's no such demarcation of the commercial cinema or the parallel cinema. Do you have the same feeling as well that the commercial mainstream cinema or the art cinema can merge sometime? They can. I think so. I think I think uh, I think in both in both commercial cinema and the parallel cinema, as you call it, they've been good films and they've been terrible films. Okay, just because they were in parallel cinema, that doesn't mean they didn't make terrible films. They made some really bad films, just as commercial cinema did. They've been good and bad in both ends, you know. But it is possible. I mean, there is a gap that is can be bridged by these films that are, you know, can be taken both, you know, the commercial element and still have the sensibilities of a parallel cinema. When you're writing script for Bombay, do you have any sort of that feeling of that whether this film will enter in controversy or will have some problems when you're writing and when you're directing about it? No, not at all. Only thing when you have when you're doing any film is that whether this film will run or not, whether this film will be liked or not, whether it will be appreciated or not. You don't think that, I never thought even for a second that any of these films will run into controversy. When it went into sense of problem, I was amazed because it was, it had got into because somebody who was supposed to take a decision doesn't take a decision, that is all. Otherwise, if the film had released, it wouldn't have, you know, without the censorship con controversy, it may not have had the controversy at all. Tell us about your production company that you have started, the Madras Talkies. How it happened and why you thought that you sh can go into the production company? No, I mean it is that is just a uh, that is just two things. One is a certain amount of freedom in what you want to do and how you want to do. If you're doing it for another producer, you're tagging him along wherever you're going. You know, you're putting him into things that he may not have conviction or he might have conviction. This is, you know, you take risk on your own project, you know, that you stand, you're putting in the time and the effort and you're saying that I'm responsible for this. Whatever happens, I am the cause for this. So it does that. And it also means a certain amount of liberty in terms of economics, you know, that that if it if it doesn't do commercially well, you know, you have only yourself to answer. You don't have to go back and say, I'm sorry, I thought it would do well. No. You don't have that kind of a responsibility. And if it does well, you're the only one to you know who's going to get a chance to make another film like this next time. Yeah. Your career graph has been too much up and down. If you can see one or two flops have been given. So what do you say after your journey after your Bombay, Bombay till now? You can you tell us something about those films you have made, the subjects you have chosen from Bombay to the After journey? Bombay, after Bombay, I did a film called Iruvar, which. Uh, which didn't do commercially very well, but which I think is the best film that I've done so far. It gave me a lot of satisfaction. That was the direction which I wanted to do. And uh, after that was Dilse. And after that, I've Pai they have done. Dilse, if you talk about Dilse, it was a joint venture sort of thing with you, Mr. Ram Gopal Verma and Shekhar Kapoor. Why you all three got together, What's what all got into it, but why it could not do well in India, but it did well in abroad. What do you think? Why Indian uh, audience could not Ask me it? one question. You ask me three questions on the same thing. You know. <laughs> the thing is, why you three people got together? Uh, okay. The three of us were interested in cinema. The three of us have talked quite a bit, met, talked quite a bit about films, and you know, and we always thought we'd, we could do something together. So it was, it just happened. That's all. And what was the experience? Bring no, it was, it was just a, it was, they were both, I mean, we were very clear that you, whoever makes a film, the other person will not, will not interfere, will not put their, their, they will just be a support, you know, which is what it was, you know. The, the two of them were, were backing the project, but other than that, it was my film. So if it does well or if it doesn't do well, it is my responsibility. Similarly, if tomorrow if we do another film with somebody else's directing, it will be his baby. Nobody else will have, you know, any kind of, a, the idea of doing together is that you have that independence. You don't have a producer to tell you that, that this is all right or this is not all right and that you have the strength to do the kind of things that you believe in you know. and all three of us felt that you know we should be doing things that we believe in you know. doing film in hindi was it difficult for you i've you know 
I I'm not uh, conversant. I'm not fluent in Hindi. I just manage manage to understand that as well. But was it difficult? No. I've started my film career and doing a film in a language I had no idea about. So it was not the first time that I've done this. So I knew. It just means that you get a little more dependent on the artist. You give a little more rein. You give a little more, you know, freedom to the actor and the actress. And you have in mind that this is what you need to convey in this sequence. And this is what we have written. So I I give them a little more liberty to say it, you know, whichever way it flows naturally for them in that language. That's all. You trust the actor a little more when you don't know the language. If I knew the language completely, I might be a little more insistent on saying no, no, say it with this pause, you know. Whereas now I trust him. I trust him to understand what character we are talking of and. I give him a little more freedom. That's all. I mean, other than that, it was not too much of a difference. Can you highlight why Dilse could not be expected accepted by Indian audience, but abroad it did do a little better business? Why it could not be accepted by Indian audience? I don't know. Honestly, I mean, I, just like I don't know why Roja was accepted all over. It happens. I mean, you make a film the way you know you think, and because. Roja was accepted. I was able to do Bombay, and because Bombay was accepted, I was able to do Dilse. So it just the previous acceptance gives you a little more freedom and a little more gap to experiment a little more and go two steps further, which is what you try to do with each film. So when you and when you are able to, I uh, you know, accept when they appreciate you, you should also be able to accept when they you know reject you. It's Dilse got the Net Pack Films Award. That's right. What was the? Can you? Say it didn't do well commercially, but it was an award-winning film. The music did well. Why? Why do you feel it lacked? It somewhere could not uh, communicate with the audience. Yeah, it obviously hasn't communicated with the audience. Otherwise, they would have seen the film. Something in the film that just didn't work for them. What's the? Do you feel there's a difference between the Bollywood and the Madras cinema or the South Indian no, cinema? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think. Uh, uh, I don't think there's really that kind of a difference. I think a film works or a film doesn't work. The the fact that it was in Hindi was no reason, no excuse for it not working. It just didn't work. That's all.